Well, Matthew, Will, congratulations. The two of you have proven your skills and are joining us in the third and final round of this kitchen theme competition. Over the past two rounds, you both built a small chef's knife. In the next four days, we're up in the ante and asking you both to build a slightly more intimidating blade for the culinary world. Placements, we want you to build this. The hog splitter. Good luck. We'll see you both in four days. Let's go. I've never made a weapon this big before. The challenge is drawing it so wide and so far out. I'm starting with 36 layers of 1095 and 15 N20. I have some wrought iron around here. I'm going to do a Damascus sand mine, and it's going to look awesome. It looks beautiful. I've got the wrought iron all drawn out. It's time to get our full billet together. Looking good. Looks like I needed about another inch for my width. It's going pretty smooth. Now that we're forged to length and width, it's time to grind the profile and get a shape on this blade. I'm starting to see a few little inclusions on the spine. Getting cracks is one of the worst things that could happen to a blade of this size. When the judges go to test it, it would definitely fail. I'm at the edge of my parameters right now, so I don't want to grind any farther. So I'm just going to fill it with weld and make it solid. I'm happy with this result. Hopefully, we can make it through testing. Yesterday, we got a quench done. And then I painted a bare paw with nail polish. So when I etch this, when I clean off the nail polish, it will leave the negative image on bare steel. First thing I'm going to do this morning is clean off that nail polish. I want to see that Maker's Mark pop. Looks great. It's time to get the handle ready. It's the end of day four. This thing is awesome. It is sharp. It is sleek. I can't wait to see it cut. I'm happy as hell right now. My plan is to make this hog splitter out of San Mai Damascus with a core of 80 CRV2. I set up my Damascus billet and I chuck it in the forge. Oh my God. Dear God, it's heavy. I am starting to get a little worried because it's just such a hard material. It's just so much to move. The billet is an inch and a half wide. I'm aiming for a four and a half inch wide blade. So I clean it up and then restack and triple my layer count. I still have to draw out this hog splitter to size. It's just taking forever. Carbon steel is really, really hard. It feels like pounding on a rock. I am worried that I just won't have enough width in my blade to make this work and to meet parameters. I thought I had enough, but I don't. Time is limited. So I decide to weld a one inch piece of bar onto the spine so that I meet width parameters. I am just praying that when I put it in the oil, it doesn't bend or warp. It is straight, nothing seems to have cracked. I'm feeling tentatively triumphant. I have a fully hardened blade. I just need to put the rest of my handle on, etch, sharpen, and put an animal on it. I go for a etch, and it's beautiful. It's not as bright as I'd like, but you can't have everything in this world. I need to engrave a dragon into this thing. I'm carving a dragon because they're kind of my signature. One of the things that I teach and that stands out about my classes is that we always finish by making a silly little dragon face. Now I can get to my fit and finish work. It looks really good and it feels really good in the hand. I guess I'm done. Welcome to the keel test. In keeping with our culinary theme, I'm going to take your hog splitter and try to use it like a butcher to split this hog in half. Willow, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's go full hog. I want to curl up into a ball. All I can think about is, will it cut? Oh, oh, oh. 
talk about your hog splitter here. First up, the overall look, kind of unique. I like that point at the tip over there. It kind of gives it a different look. Holding on to it was nice and smooth. And with a very heavy top-loaded blade, I can control even with light cuts to make sure that I can split a whole hog in half. And overall, your hog splitter, beautiful keel. Matthew, you're up. You ready? Do your worst. All right. Going into this test, I am close to myself. It was a heck of a huge weapon to build. I definitely had some struggles, but it's awesome. I love looking at this thing. Gentlemen, uh, this does not look like it's within parameters. It looks smaller. What do you guys think? It had to be at least four. Yeah, four inches throughout the entire, through the entire it has to be a minimum of four inches. Let's just find out. What are we at? He's at least an eighth of inch short, eighth to a quarter short. All the, the way whole, through. So it's a parameter fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, Matthew, we got a bit of an issue. With this blade, we had a series of parameters, one of which was that it should not be any less than four inches throughout the entirety of the blade, and it seems that you did not meet that mark. So, this is considered a parameter failure. We want to say thank you for coming out. You're clearly a talented smith, but unfortunately, your time in this competition has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Before I ground my edge, I knew I was darn close to get parameter and I must have just gone a little bit too small. It is what it is, but overall this experience was awesome. I would definitely do this again if I was invited back. Well, Will, congratulations. That makes you a Forge and Fire champion. You'll be receiving a check for $10,000. I had an absolute blast. I have learned so much. I'm like 20 times the bladesmith I was even a week ago. Thank you. Creative hey, work can around. I give you a hug? I know you're very big and scary, but can I hug you? <laughs> I'm not very big. Well, you're bigger than me. All right, sure.